Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to this week's video scope. And it's a little bit different. As you can see, first of all, I'm doing it on a Facebook Live. And so, hello, live world. Secondly, I am at the fabulous and incredible United Astrology Conference. It really is like the Olympics of astrology, mm -hmm. but it's not competitive. It's like, it's just love. It's just love and it's the biggest astrology party on the planet and it has been so amazing and such a high and I've gotten the chance to connect with these people who I know and I love and some people I'm meeting for the first time and others I have met many times before and I know the only thing I really know about them is that they are incredible astrologers and so you know I always like to say you can't have astrology without the astrologer and that whoever you are you are going to bring yourself to the sky and so astrologers because we are all unique people we're gonna see and interpret and also communicate what it is we understand the symbols to be in our own unique way and so what I thought we could do for this week's video scope which will also be on YouTube is that I could show you like you could see four astrologers three astrologers that I absolutely think are incredible and we are gonna discuss what is happening this week in the sky and give you our interpretations one aspect at a time and I love you guys for being here thank you so much for celebrating first of all the United Astrology Conference secondly my amazing friends and of course your lives and the sky with us so I'm going to I want my friends these amazing women who are here with me to introduce themselves one at a time and they'll introduce themselves and then I'll tell you what I love about them and that's how we're gonna start so go ahead Emily this is Emily hi I'm Emily Newhouse uh, aka many ways astrology is that it that's oh, is I to say more? <laughs> you might hear us laughing quite a bit because we love each other but I just think Emily is amazing I'm just so happy that you're here for this moment very spontaneous moment at that and she, what I know about her is that she's sensitive and she's spiritual and she's one of the people that I know we can talk and be really honest with each other but also like talk about what's happening in our charts in like the most amazing spontaneous way but then also go on this journey of self-discovery together so there's a lot of trust and uh, I just think she's amazing and creative thank you now this is Jessica <laughs> Jessica Hi. introduce yourself I'm Jessica Lingato I'm an astrologer uh, I've been an astrologer since 95 but I've been full-time since 99 and I love astrology so Jessica is amazing this is my first time meeting Jessica at this conference and she has been doing amazing things in astrology like I've just been watching her from afar and been so proud of her like the way that she just is in her truth and in her beauty and she's Thank been you. doing big things she's very humble right now but trust <laughs> me she has been on like the biggest uh, publications and channels really around the world <laughs> <clears throat> I remember you did a, a celebrity reading on the billboard for billboard yeah yeah <laughs> and so yeah she's done a lot of amazing things so it's just amazing that you're here thank you I'm thank really you. really excited about that and I've loved her work for a while right, and you. this is Christy <laughs> introduce yourself Christy hello I'm Christy the transmuting butterfly and I'm an astrologer as well I think Nadia for last month she featured me on her channel and I've just um, I made it here to UAC and met her in person so she's been an inspiration to me and I thank her for even allowing me to be here with her and to share her space and <laughs> of course you. well Christy I've known online for a few years and she's so loving and I've just seen her grow and blossom and be this amazing astro astrological presence in the world so I loved having her on my channel and I've loved getting to know her in person and of course to have this moment with these amazing people together yeah. is just so lovely and I'm glad it came together and it was very spontaneous yeah. as well so let's jump in and talk about this week okay uh, what is happening this week well what an amazing week it is we have an active sky you know I always like to say that and really we can make any week amazing I do believe that but we have some great things happening early in the week now depending on where you are on the planet it'll be right around the 29th or so give or take a day on either side but we are going to have a full moon and this full moon is in the sign of Sagittarius it is at eight degrees of Sagittarius for those astro nerds out there like us and it is speaking kindly to Mars or sextile Mars which is the name of the aspect and so 
here we are. As I look at this, and we're going to go one at a time, but for me, a Sag moon is a time of inspiration. But it's also a time when we are considering what it means to be a world citizen and also what it means to have our own identity as well. And so where is it that it is a healthy sense of connection to everyone on the planet? And where is it that maybe it goes in directions that sort of show us our separation from each other and how can we heal that? That's part of how the Sag energy is realized. But I think also with the Sag energy, we start to see examples, especially with a full moon, some sort of celebration of the other and what is considered uh, beautiful about our differences and that tends to come to the forefront and I think that's going to be the case right now especially because Mars in Aquarius is speaking to this particular full moon and what that says to me is that again this idea of what is different being what it is that we are feeling motivated towards so how do you guys interpret it who wants to go first I can go first okay okay um, I always, when I look at full moons, I'm always looking at a time to release and a time to let go. And because it's in Sagittarius, it's a time to really confront the truth. And so this doesn't have to be a traumatic thing. It can be a time where you really look at the truth of a habit you've had that isn't serving you. And because of Mars' sextile, it's energizing to mobilize and make an actual change. So if there's something you've been trying to move forward in your life that requires some sort of shedding, um, this is a good time to do it. If you've been evading some sort of truth, this we can really energize you, especially around that 29th day, can energize you to really look at the truth and, and kind of make use of it. That's kind of my quick take on that. So how about you go next? Well, with um, just looking back a little bit, the last full moon in Scorpio, um, and this whole cycle up to this point, now we have Gemini Sun, Moon in uh, Sagittarius, and Mars in Aquarius. These are all very much energies that if you realize in this last lunar cycle all that dark stuff that you have hidden within yourself, all that that is no longer serving you and as Jessica said, to let it go and release. Um, Aquarius, Gemini, and Sagittarius are all about connection outside of yourself and just taking that step to move forward and just go on your new adventure, mm -hmm. your, your new rebirth in a sense with fire and love and air and woo, <laughs> fun. <laughs> Emily? Yeah, so riffing off of what um, everyone else said, first when I heard the aspect, I was like new moon and I was like formulating what I was thinking, And but it's a full moon. Um, so full moons are just a, a great time to release. Um, there's this uh, thing that I was once told, like just like writing down like 10 things you want to release and just releasing them. Um, when I think Sagittarius, um, I always think of like the teacher, the learner, um, and so it might be a time when people are like completing some sort of um, education or like a part of your education. Um, but I generally just think that any full moon is, is a good time to release. Um, and I really like what Jessica Lenietta said about uh, releasing uh, habits. I think, I could be wrong, but I think Sag is, sometimes overdo it because ruled by Jupiter. So um, I'm definitely gonna be thinking about that. Well, a little bit overdoing it never hurt anybody. <laughs> <laughs> That's my philosophy anyways, because I have a sad mood. Yeah. But I am hearing, I'm watching and reading, a lot of people are saying, how is this gonna affect Sages in particular? And I think when it's a full moon in your own sign, it is as if some truth about yourself comes forward and so, it's like what probably has been there all along, but you didn't really acknowledge it or weren't ready to see it fully until you saw it in the clear light of the full moon. So ultimately it connects to some uh, part of you in terms of identity and some clarity about yourself. How do you understand uh, if for the Sages out there, if they have a full moon in their own sign, how would it speak to them? I can just add yeah, to that. Please. Um, this is more of a general full moon thing, but I love this idea that um, when astrology started, electricity didn't exist, obviously. So on a new moon, it was dark and there was a mystery. And on a full moon it was the brightest of night. And so that's when like literally you could see things. So like you could see like someone you know ha having sex in the bushes. <laughs> oops, oops, I went naughty. I know, um, I told them not to be naughty, you know? You know, and, and so yeah, it is a time when things get um, illuminated and um, and yeah, for, for Sag, yeah, 
Yeah. I had to tell them not to be naughty, which probably says more about me than anything. <laughs> no, no, it was, but, it was a good call. I mean, I, I the the thing that is really exciting to me about when a full moon is in your sign, it's like this amazing thing because it only happens the once in a year. So it's a time to, as you were both saying, like bring the light of emotional clarity to your identity and to the sense of self that you're working from. So there can be this time of unity of perspective when the full moon's in your sign, which is really energizing, or if you're trying to evade the truth, is really traumatizing. <laughs> so it's either way because of the fact that it is in Sagittarius and because of the fact that we do have this happy Mars, um, I think this is a time where you can use the truth and it's gonna feel organic, it's gonna feel like it's working, it's not gonna be like a trauma. That's my hope for you. <coughs> couldn't have said it better <laughs> <laughs> but um you know when the moon comes into your sign and it, let's say you have the sun there primarily four Sagittarians with the sun um, it's kind of like that new moon energy in a sense where the, the, the moon meets the Sun so for you it's this internal new cycle of like your inner self inner it brings that inner like that Sun that you shine outwardly so often you get to bring it in and kind of reflect it inside of yourself so it's a great time to see yourself clearly and just uh, sit with the moon and, and take that lunar Sagittarian energy with you along with your sun in Sagittarius. So. And I just also wanted to say that I, when I do the monthly horoscopes that are on YouTube, I always focus on the new moons and full moons and more for the month. So I did talk about that for each and every sign and you can watch that on my YouTube channel. and. Do you guys also have horoscopes in their own way? All of these ladies here share their astrological insights so you can go to their websites and go to what they're doing and you can get more personalized insights that way as well. And of course, superstars, as you may know, superstars, uh, I really dive in each and every week with what's happening in the sky as well, including this full moon. So also the same day as the full moon, we have Mercury going into the sign of Gemini. So Mercury is coming <laughs> home. That is so exciting, yes. And yes. you know, I think that when a planet comes home, it is as if it is able to bring forward its best qualities. It's able to shine forward that much more comfortably, just like you feel comfortable at home, that planet starts feeling comfortable at home as well. And Mercury, to me, has to do with what we're talking about. And sometimes that's reflected in the media, Sometimes it's reflected more in terms of the social media and the conversations we're having. But with Mercury going into the sign of Gemini, we are gonna have to be a little bit careful because this can be a whole lot of perspectives. This can also be a whole lot of gossip. And so that is something that we may want to be mindful of, how much of that is healthy for us to participate in as part of our own unique journeys. And where is it that we can observe where there's a disconnect between what we're sharing with other people and whom it is that we truly want to believe in, what it is that we truly hold as true for ourselves. And so how do you guys interpret uh, Mercury in the sign of Gemini? Let's uh, start with Christy. Well, I, I'm a fan of Gemini. I, I'm a team Gemini girl. Um, so the fact of that course, we're- Of course, we love all the signs. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so the fact that Mercury is coming into Gemini, it's home. I think we're ready to talk about all this that we have been going through, through the transits in the last few months and we're ready to formulate the mind, use our mind, use our mouth to create this new, you know, this new chapter that we're really going into, I feel, since uh, the rebirthing. So um, I'm excited for it. I think that we can use some Gemini in ourselves, in our minds, in our mouth, and uh, create some good, good knowledge. So what do you mean by rebirthing? You said well, since the rebirthing. Well, with the Scorpio full moon, okay. I felt that was such a powerful, like, full moon. Um, so much was happening at that time that we kind of all died a little mm -hmm. <laughs> and this whole since the last full moon to this full moon we've been kind of regenerating and um, now with um, Uranus having moved into Taurus and then um, Mars going into Aquarius and everything that happened in Taurus as the new moon in Taurus it's just we've shifted so much energy so quickly that um, with this new cycle of the full moon and then uh, Mercury going into Gemini we can start just okay, this is what happened, <laughs> you know, and start working on just integrating it and organizing it mentally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, Emily, 
what do you think about Mercury going into Gemini? Um, so, you know, Mercury going into its own sign. So it's, it's going to be able to do the Mercury things, the communicating, the travel. Um, people are always asking me, like, when is Mercury not retrograde? I'm like, well, it's not retrograde a lot. You just don't notice when it's not retrograde. I feel like Mercury going into Gemini is a really great time to um, communicate with Mercury, to write, to read, um, to, yeah, to travel, um, to go on walks to sh short distances. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica? Okay, so Mercury, Mercury in Gemini. I love it too. I love Gemini, but we the, all love, we Gemini. love Gemini. Don't get us wrong. <laughs> no, no, right? I know Gemini gets a bad Gemini. rap. Yeah. I love Gemini. Yeah. That said, it's a great time for being interested and being inquisitive. Mm -hmm. And the thing that's really exciting about not just the fact that it's Mercury in Gemini, Mars is also in Aquarius. So we have both of these planets in air signs, and they're both really interested in the world around them, and they're interested in people. So this is an excellent time for being interested in your relationships, for remembering the people you're friends with, and calling them or texting them, and being like, hey, what's up? What's up with you? Um, because this is a great time to connect, and it can be a great time to fortify your relationships simply by being interested in them, and like blah, blah, blahing with people. And if you're busy, you can send someone an emoji. If someone sends me an emoji, I feel loved. So send a friend an emoji. As long as advice. it's not certain emojis. Well, it's yeah. true. <laughs> I have to send a like and poop emoji more than once. It's true. Yeah, yeah. But you're right. Kind, send the kind emojis, if you will. Yes. And that is a great segue into the fact that as we move into the first days of the new month, so happy June to everybody out there, we're going to move into the first days of June. And what happens? Well, that Mercury is going to reach out and speak in supreme harmony with Mars. If you're an astrology nerd like us, Mercury will trine Mars. So Mercury and Gemini trining Mars in Aquarius. How do you think that that is going to work out? Well, let me share my insights. I loved what was said about um, the communication, about us connecting with other people. I think that the sign of Gemini does have to do with sharing and Mercury and Gemini. It has to do with disseminating information. Now, of course, information, that can be all kinds of information. But with that connection to Aquarius, in some way we will be motivated to share according to a sense of idealism within us. And there will also be a sense in some way to want to evolve what it is that is being shared. And I don't think that it's an accident right now. There's a lot of talk about how it is that Facebook wants to bring greater integrity to the things that are shared on their platform. And this may be something with new things implemented right around the time of Mercury reaching that perfection with that conversation with Mars, right around that time, maybe a time when we see certain things implemented, but we are gonna have to be a little bit careful because even the sign of Aquarius, you know, it has a strong duality to it. And as much as we may think that we sort of judge that this is true and this is not, yes, there is something to be said for what is factually true and what is not. But at the same time, if something is an opinion if something is a truth that you hold that is ultimately subjective, does it still have a place to be shared more widely? Well, that may be part of the discussion that we're having as a collective, especially as we move to the very early days of June. So Emily, how do you understand that aspect of uh, Mercury in Gemini trining uh, Mars in Aquarius? That's a great aspect. Not to say that other aspects aren't great. They're all great! <laughs> we love all aspects. Uh, yes. All aspects are great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because because Gemini, um, there, there can be distraction. There can be too many things going on, too much information. I want to text my friend and also write my screenplay at the same time and also watch a TV show. Mm -hmm. um, and Mars is, Mars is about the will. And Mars and Aquarius I love because Aquarius can be about uh, like logic and, and, and intellect and like how are we going to really implement this in the real world. And so the Mars and Aquarius can take those Mercury and Gemini, Gemini ideas and bring them into the real world. And because there's the Aquarius, it's that for the greater good, which we really need right now. <laughs> Jessica? Yeah, we, we really do. We really need that right now, it's true. Yeah, I was also thinking about, kind of off of what you were saying, about how, you know, Mercury and Gemini can be a little duplicitous. And Mars and Aquarius can be completely open-minded about everything that it's not completely closed-minded about. And so there's a, a need for us um, to really be open to exploring the truth instead of having fixed ideas that we are reactive about 
or as you mentioned, I think earlier, gossiping. Um, it might be really tempting with all this air to want to gossip, but it's not necessarily a great use of energy or the kindest thing. And so, you know, remembering to act in accordance with what you actually believe in instead of what's just immediately in front of you is a good kind of point of focus to make the best of this energy. And uh, yes, uh, yes, 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 <laughs> on all three. Um, really, when I think of, you know, that Mars and Aquarius, the fact that we're doing new things, things that are outside of the box. And when our mind is put to use with that Mercury in Gemini, um, and that then you have the actions to match it and actions to do it in new ways. Um, I think with the correct use of the energy, we can definitely start formulating plans and actions to help us build this whole new life that we're trying to create from what we came from. So I'm really excited for that. Well, now the news that I'm incredibly excited about, I am like jumping for joy about, and that is as we finish the week, I think as I was saying about, you heard that Canadian in me a little <laughs> bit, right? But and I catch it in me sometimes, but okay. We get to the end of the week, what is happening? Well, we're going to have this beautiful, rare, grand trine in the sky, Jupiter and Venus and Neptune. This is an absolutely beautiful energy that we have playing out. I think somebody's talking, let's hope that they calm down. Um, but yes, this is an absolutely beautiful energy. I am so looking forward to this because I see this as really these three planets bringing out the best in each other, bringing out their more inspirational sides, creative sides, and loving sides as well. And I see this as an amazing time for artists in particular, uh, especially if you're somebody who's looking to plug into source for art. But we were talking a little bit earlier before this started and I was saying, didn't Kurt Cobain have something like this in his natal chart? He had this beautiful uh, grand trine, I could be wrong, but if I remember correctly, he had uh, Venus and Neptune and Jupiter. Is that right? Do you remember? We have a friend off camera who sort of. That. Yeah, I seem I to seem remember something that. Something similar to that. Not that. Music. Okay, so <laughs> I hope nobody heard that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so you think about like somebody who's just really creative and very plugged into source and very committed to accessing that energy, but at the same time, it needs to be channeled. This is in water energy after all, and we're going to be wanting to feel something as part of our own unique journeys. and it is so important to direct this energy because in its best, it can really bring people together. It can be these wonderful collective examples of compassion that we have for each other and the beauty that we see in everyone and everything. And it can be an absolute celebration of art as well, an art that in some way taps into the collective unconscious in a way that is deeply meaningful to a lot of people. And so the important thing here is to make sure that we're using this energy consciously. I do also think that a lot of people out there are going to be feeling like, well, they want to fall in love and they want to be in love and that they're carried away on, a, on an inspiration, on a moment. <laughs> and we're going to be believing in soulmates and having that strong sense of being connected to soulmates as well. And so this should be a beautiful thing to cultivate, especially wherever it is that you want to feel guided on a soul level towards greater love than you've known before. So how do you interpret this? Let's start with Christy. How would you interpret this? I'm, I'm already like, woohoo, because <laughs> Jupiter's on my Venus. But <laughs> having that water trine, yeah. um, of, you know, along with that air. So we were talking about the mind. We were talking about making it happen, but this speaks to also bringing the heart and soul into it, the feelings and being like connected to source and just making sure that that connection to spirit is truly connected to our heart and truly just flowing along with our ideas. So I'm really excited. Um, I hope that everyone uses it to the best, highest loving, um, vibration so that what you create this week is in total alignment with your soul's direction and karma and path in this life because it's very powerful um so that's my little point <laughs> for that <clears throat> yeah so so what christy said like the thing with with grand trines i am familiar with them and you have to do the work. You have to use the energy. The energy will not use you. Other times the energy will use you and we can explore that when that happens. But um, 
Venus, Jupiter, Neptune, like, oh, like that's just beautiful. Like I just think of like a beautiful sunset or just like a gorgeous movie musical uh, <laughs> that is about, you know. Or feeling uh, like you're in a movie musical, right? <laughs> feeling like you're in a movie yeah. musical. Um, and miracles? Do you think miracles? Like miracles? Feel... Well, the the divine. Like I I see oh. Venus and, and and Neptune, and I think it's also a great time to um, to connect with the divine. Whatever is the divine for you, whether it, it's like a walk in nature or coloring them in a mandala or an organized religion, as or whatever it may be. Um, yeah, that's a beautiful. Also, also um, water trines are very psychic time, so it, it's it's definitely a time when um, there there could be like information download, like listen to the messages that the universe is giving you. Jessica, okay, uh, I love a grand trine in water. That is just like the energy is flowing and it's very addictive. Isn't it, it? Well, yeah. that's exactly where my mind would go. Yeah. So it's like it's a time where. You can think you're gonna have a cocktail and then end up with four and be like, uh-oh, what did I do? So it's <laughs> definitely a time to be smart and responsible with how you use whatever you use. Um, this is a great time for falling in love, but not necessarily for falling in love with a person. It's a great time for falling in love with potential and the divine. And so this is a time to be in the feelings and in the soul calling without making judgments or assessments about what it means in the, after it's passed. Because mm -hmm. when it passes, it's passed. And so keeping that like analytic discernment that we were talking about earlier, as you really avail yourself to the energy and you know what everyone's saying about how this is an amazing time for creativity and spirituality, it's you don't even need our advice, it's just gonna flow. And it's gonna be a time that if you choose to make the most of it, so much good will happen. So mm -hmm. make, make the most of it if you can. Yeah. How beautiful, mm -hmm. how beautiful. Now people are asking quite a few questions. I, am, I did want to try and keep it focused to the week because this is going to go up as the Astro Fabulous weekly horoscope that goes on YouTube. This is going to be it for this week. Um, but I will very quickly just throw out a couple of questions to people. One is somebody asked about full moon rituals. Is there anything that you guys do for a full moon ritual? I have lots of full moon rituals. Yeah. Can I, even though I just talked, I'm gonna do it again. Okay, go okay. So share one or two. Yeah. I love for a full moon ritual to first of all, get like be alone because it's a time for getting in your feels and that means not necessarily getting distracted by social media or your friends and take a moment to really get present with what's been bugging you and what you've been doing to participate in it. And then you can ritualistically write out things that you want to release in your own habits and your own choices. And then safely in a bathtub or something like that, you can burn the page. Please be safe, don't start a fire, it's a, it's a Sag moon. But you can uh, burn the page as a way to release it or if that feels unsafe, you can just like use a black Sharpie and black it out and then tear it up. And that is a way of owning your feels and then releasing them. Yeah, I've done that a few times. When I feel called to, I will do a ritual. Um, and then I also like to just sort of go to my altar and just take a crystal and just sort of sit with it and just be, oh, okay. Um, and actually I've done it with my partner too and it's, it's really nice energy. I love that you said that, like when I feel called to. It'll, it's always different and it's always gonna be a little bit different too. So what about you? Oh my goodness. Um, well, if you have crystals, take them out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Put them out in the moonlight, let them have some uh, moon fun, get charged up and cleared and set their intention. So that's something I do. Um, I love to meditate in outside with my journal and just, um, not just do intentions, but listen. Mm -hmm. And especially with that water trine coming soon, I mean, and all that air, just listen and write what you feel, write what you hear, write what you receive. Um, because it's not just about using your mind and heart to put your intentions, but there may be something that spirit wants to tell you. Mm -hmm. And that will be great to do with that you know, you're right there in the moon, you've got the message, let's go, write it down, and that way you can refer to it again later, mm -hmm. and just make sure you're on course with that, so. Can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. So, I live in the city, and I've always wondered about this, like, if I put my crystals in my window, like, it's the, the, will the like, do I have to worry about, like, if the moonlight is hitting it, or do I just, like, I put it in the full moon night, and, like, let, 
So like, do you, I mean, do you put it outside of your window no, or in no, the inside? it's the city. It's so the city. city. Oh, okay, so, yeah. so no like, balcony, no nothing, just no. the, okay, got it. Yeah, just uh, put it by the, I mean, the moonlight, it's more about the moon energy in a yeah. sense. So like um, if I really wanted to go to the park, well, I'm not going to go to the park at night, go to the front yard. <laughs> yeah. There's, yeah, just, just when you go out, crystals. bring them. Yeah. If you have too many, then yeah, you might have to choose a few. Choose which ones I want. Yeah, to but just or, take them with you for a little bit. Right. Of, you know, an yeah, hour. I always figured like that the buildings would block it and everything. Okay. I think there's yeah. the moon energy. Well, just just as everyday life, we live with the energy around us. Mm -hmm. And as long as you set the intention that you're putting them on the on the window sill to attract that energy. Mm -hmm. I think you'll be fine. Universe will make sure to bring you some moon energy Thanks, to your stones. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, someone asked a few times, lottery. What should you look for if you want to win the lottery? What kind of oh. stuff? Okay, so here I'll tell you from my what I've heard. I have a very dear friend who I've interviewed before, and you can watch her interview on my channel. Her name is Euriria Robles, and she is amazing. She's a beautiful... Uh, like really world renowned Mexican renowned really the only astrologer who's who is employed by the government of Mexico wow. yeah and wow. she's wow. And so she's cool. just brilliant she knows so much I, and I just she's such an amazing person but she has this whole like presentation that she does in this whole study that she did where she looked at your part of fortune return and you want to find your exact part of fortune return and you know you have to play around a little bit with the chart and you have to go forward day by day and see when it is that your part of fortune the transiting part of fortune is going to conjunct your natal part of fortune that that's when you buy a lottery ticket that was that's her presentation Whoa, she did so excited to learn this yes oh, at nice. a, at a at a astrology conference i went to in mexico she did a whole oh. presentation around this yeah i should interview her just about this uh, so to share that with you guys I know that I like to look at stuff happening with Jupiter, stuff happening in the fifth house. That tends to be what we normally think of. But the thing is that I also think that, you know, we all are born with a lottery ticket. Like that is my belief. Each one of us inside has a lottery ticket and it's about trusting it and, and placing a bet on it and gambling on it. And what that lottery ticket is will change as you change. And it isn't what you always think it is, you know, like, I mean, uh, I have shared, and again, I don't like to share too much about my, my own stuff because I really love being of service. I love that my work isn't about me. But I recently got a puppy, right? And those people who are connected with me on Instagram, you have seen Biggie, his name is Biggie Smalls. He's the light of my life right now. And it is amazing how much just a few weeks with Biggie has changed my life and, and made me reconsider so much of what I consider a fortunate life to be. And, uh, you know, to watch him, just the joy that he feels to run on a beach. Like, to watch that really was a profound experience for me. I almost started to cry watching that because I realized, like, this is freedom to him. You know, what does every being want? To be free, to breathe, to rejoice in their existence. This is what every uh, being wants in the world. And it was so moving to me and I feel changed since seeing that like a few weeks ago. And it has changed the way that I understand what being a fortunate person means. And so for me today, like if you were to ask me like when to play the lottery, you know, for me that's Biggie coming into my life was me winning the lottery. That's how I feel. And so it's gonna be different for everybody. I know people like my mom, she really wanted to have kids. Like that was her thing, she wanted to have kids. And her having kids was her winning the lottery, you know? So it's very unique to each person. And so I think it's also about honoring what that lottery ticket is uniquely for you and then trusting it. And that really is the greatest, uh, the greatest lottery that you can play. So any uh, feedback, advice, insights into lottery ticket stuff or playing the lottery or astrological aspects, anything to look for? I don't even have beginner's luck <laughs> in, in 
gambling or lotteries. Well, that, and she lives in Las Vegas. <laughs> yeah, and, and Christy lives in Las Vegas. However, in other ways... I you, won the lottery. Yes. Uh, just being here, I think, University, yeah, I won the lottery. Being here at UAC <laughs> is like winning the lottery for being sure. Being on this video kind of uh, is like the lottery for me, honestly. <laughs> this is amazing. Well, thank you so much for watching. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe, share, thumbs up. It means so much. And you can find me on Facebook, uh, Instagram. And of course, in the YouTube comments as well, and my website, NadiaShaw.com. If you want to know how all this wonderful stuff this week speaks to you and your sign, you can find me at AstroFabulous.com or NadiaShaw.com. Sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes every week and so much more. Unlimited access to special horoscopes and so much more. All of this in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. And I want these lovely people here one at a time to say goodbye and to introduce themselves or reintroduce themselves once again and to share their love. So go ahead, Emily. Oh, thank you, Nadia, for yeah. this amazing opportunity. I'm in sort of the first year of my practice. Um, my website's manywaysastrology.com. I will also be starting an Instagram soon. I like to draw and I'm a very visual person. Maybe you could tell by the way I talk about the planets. Um, and thank you so much. And have a great week, everyone. <laughs> Jessica. Oh, okay. Again, thank you so much. This was super fun. Okay, I'm Jessica Lagnato, and you can find me on my website at lovelagnato.com, and that's L-A-N-Y-A-D-O-O. -O. And on there, you can read my horoscopes, and you can hear my weekly podcasts, and you can also find me on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook at Jessica Lagnato. Christy. <laughs> Dear Christy, yes. And um, Christy, the transmuting butterfly, you can uh, go to my website, butterflyastrology.com. I have links to everything there, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, tw uh, Twitter now, Tumblr now. I'm, I'm everywhere apparently now. So thank you. And thank you, Nadia. Thank you so much for this. We love you. Yeah. We love each oh, other. We love, we love each other. <laughs> See, this is the positive energy, the loving energy. I'm uh, really so grateful for all of you. Thank you for being here to celebrate your lives and celebrate the sky with us. And it'll be a great week. Enjoy. Yes. Woo! <laughs>